The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the February 8th. Yep, this is February 8th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four, means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on it at 877 927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, we've got you covered. Go ahead and send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We got a mixed bag out there. The Dow's up 94, 93 points. The S&P's down three. NASDAQ 100 up 43. Russell's up 17. Semis are up 85. Trendy's off 60. Gold's off six bucks. Silver's up 17 pennies. I'd say we got a mixed bag. Lights recruit up a buck 40. Natural gas is up in nickel. 30 year treasury down one point. Print out 119 and a quarter. Leading the charge dollar wise to the upside. $103 move, 16%. That's monolithic power systems micro strategy 68 bucks 13 percent 60 percent for arm holdings holy shnikes broadcom's up 38 bucks mercado Libre up 22 bucks to the downside it's mount everest eg is a ticker symbol 39 dollars a 10 percent move o'reilly automotive 36 bucks three percent move s p global 28 dollars six percent move mckesson 25 bucks five percent snap on 22 bucks we got some shakers but we've also got some movers. So let's begin our day. Let's begin our day. Let's begin our day by taking a look at the equity future contracts. What do we know? Well, we know we negated a uh, Rhodes Minton indicator top yesterday inside the NQ. There's no top inside the ES. There's no top inside the NQ. A bearish reversal candle would confirm a top. So even then, price would still be neutral unless it closes at least back below the top of its daily profile. The Dow, which is the weak link this morning, it does, still has a Rhodes Minton indicator top. That was this bearish sash candle back here on February the 5th that confirmed that topping pattern. Only a close above 38,892 would negate that signal. However, even though it's got a topping pattern, you can see that price remains above the top of its daily profile. The new profiles that we were looking at yesterday did not take hold. I believe there was one in the NQ. Maybe the – I can't remember where the other one was. But in any event, not, none of the new profiles that we looked at uh, took hold with regard to equity future contracts. So – it's a neutral signal unless price were to close back below 38.050. Now, that still may be the target. Now, if we take a look at the Russell 2000, there's a question to take a look at the IWM, Danny from New York. So this is the first place that we would start with that. We'll get, we'll get into it. We'll take a look at the IWM. Maybe not right away, but just since I'm talking about it right here, what you can see and what's important is that, one, number one, uh, we're trading above yesterday's high. That's a bullish signal, period, carte blanche. But what's it doing? It's trying to get back into potential resistance. Why potential resistance? Well, it really is resistance. That's because price closed below the bottom of its daily profile for more than two consecutive sessions. The bottom of that profile is 1975.10. We close above 1975.10. Price will have gotten back inside there. And then the next upside price target would be either 1996 or 2018. It's a very balanced profile out there. 
So there's no edge to either buyers or sellers with inside that profile. But if you can get back above, close above the bottom of that profile out there, and that's the first level to be watching, Dan, is uh, 1975.10. If price closes above that, odds favor you see a further rally with 1996 being that price target. Now, how are the equity futures trading inside of other major currencies? Do all-time high today in terms of euros, in terms of pounds, in terms of yen. That's a big bullish outcome for even the ES mini priced in dollars. If we take a look at the Dow, or the NQ, I should say. The, the NQ has made a new all-time high today. Also in terms of dollars, euros, yen, and pounds out there. This is a international global rally inside of U.S. markets, period. If we take a look at the Dow that's trading lower, it's made a new all-time high today in terms of euros, in terms of pounds, and in terms of yen out there. It doesn't mean we won't see some kinds of retracements out there, but the retracements that we do get, they're likely not to be very large out there. It just set up some type of range of a consolidation, but we're not even there just yet. And we're not going to get there, especially if we make new all-time highs each day in these other currencies out there. We cannot think, well, we can think however we want to. We should not think. Just We shouldn't be so selfish and only think of ourselves in terms of U.S. dollars. Because if we do that, well, we're going to get the uh, we're going to bear the cost of what being selfish is really all about. And we're not going to do that. All right. So um, let's go take a look at intraday. Let's go ahead and switch uh, panels out here. Take a quick peek at the intraday stuff before we start getting into. Well, we've got a few requests out here. Not many, but we have a few. Let's get over to our white background charts. Let's switch screens out here. Let's get to the intraday detail. And I'm not sure which one's going to pop up first. It could be. It's the ES Mini. So what do we know about it? So in the ES Mini, it's pretty easy to try to identify what its intentions are going to be. And the reason why I say that is because we've got a perfect setup here. You have a TD9 count top on the four-hour time frame chart. That TD9 count top has led to what? Nothing more than a test of support, bullish structured profile support for that time frame. That says the level of 5,005 is a very key area out there. If we see a close on a four-hour basis, by the way, four-hour basis, the next bar close at 2 p.m. After that, it'll be the 6 p.m. close. After that, it'll be the 10 p.m. close or the 5 p.m. close. Say After that, it'll be the 10 p.m. area out there. What you want to watch is both to the upside and to the downside. To the upside, a close above 50.20 negates the TD9 count top and should lead to a further rally. Likewise, a close below 5,005 should lead to a further decline. Now, that further decline could be the 49.54 level. However, uh, Lee Corso would say not so fast. Why would he say not so fast? He says, Stevie, before that breaks, you've got to at least get below the daily green oscillator and change on, which is printed at 49.93. So watch that 5,005 area. If we get it close below that, we're likely headed to the daily oscillator unchanged line. No idea what we might do after that. But right now in the ES Mini, it becomes pretty easy. So how do you trade around that, especially right now when you're right in the middle? I mean, it's really right in the center, in essence, of that profile between 5,005 and 5020. We're at 5010. That's right in the middle. So I'm not sure how you would really trade that. You've got to really go down to maybe, I don't know, a five-minute chart and see if there's any kind of patterns out there. But that's what's going on. We take a look at the ES Mini. So we come back for this break. Let's take a look at Taiwan Semiconductor. We were supposed to do that yesterday, and Stevie overlooked it. But, man, is this thing in a bullish mode out there? Here's my suggestion. Go check this out on the monthly basis and see what it's trading into and with what kind of volume. And then you tell me. Where's TSM headed to? Steve Roach with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. We're taking a look at the charts here for Taiwan Semiconductor uh, Steve, Duncan Steve inside the uh, Tiger's Den. He got the answer that I was looking for, which is if you take a look at so a couple different things. I'm going to look at the monthly chart. I'll just expand it out first so that's the only chart that we're looking at. This is going to give us the big picture out here. When I say the big picture, first, there's an A to B equals CD pattern. The B point was June of 2023. 247 million shares traded hands that day. When that was passed, it was passed with 308 million shares. So, so far this month, we're at 74 million. We're just entering you know, into it. We're only at the eighth. Just a handful of trading days out there. But here's the key. Take a look at the swing point. It's all-time swing point high was in January of 2022. The volume there was 358 million shares. As I said last month, you're at 308. We're coming into it right now. It was 74. We're coming into this thing with volume out there. So when we do that, that tells us we should go up and at least test that high. And that's on the weekly time frame. Now, the weekly A to B equals CD has a price projection of 135.19. We're at 132.94 out there, 95, something like that, 132.98. The 1 to 1.272 would take it above the high. It's all time high. That price projection, 149.12 out there. On a weekly time frame, it's really the same price projection level be the same a to b equals cd what i can share with you is a to b equals cd patterns do not end on wide ranging bars and we take a look at the daily we take a look at the weekly we take a look at the monthly that's what we've got folks so unless this thing falls off planet earth tomorrow you've got a gigantic weekly wide ranging bar out there and that says that this thing heads higher so if that says this thing heads higher again that nice next price projection will be in the 149.22 level there's no top signal on the daily no topping signal on the weekly no topping signal on the monthly this is looking awfully strong out there now 
if we look at consecutive days, higher and lower, we know once we get beyond four, we typically get a change in trend. Today's going to be day day number six. Well, not a change in trend to the downside. This, this just tells us this is just being run by the bulls out here. Now, we've gotten to six consecutive days a couple of different times as we take a look at this chart going back to June of last year. I've seen one seven consecutive day move out there. So Taiwan Semiconductor should be getting ready for some type of pullback or retracement. And it's not, it should not be for more than two to three sessions out there. So that's what we see when we take a look at Taiwan Semiconductor. It is long and strong out there. Vic wanted to take a look at Coinbase out here, so let's switch over to the Coinbase charts. C-O-I-N is that ticker symbol. And here we take a look at the daily time frame. What do we know about it? Not much. I see price right now just trading with inside its profile. Bullish in structure, and so therefore a close above what looks like 130.93. Let me see here. 130.93 should then lead to a move to 143.83, Vic. That's what the daily chart is telling us. The weekly chart is telling us that price is consolidating with inside its profile level. And if price takes out this week's low, uh, that says we head down to 95.80. We have a confirmed TD9 count top on the monthly time frame chart for Coinbase. You know, it's it's we've made, this is now on a monthly basis, so the third slightly lower low out there. So, no bottom pattern on the daily that is in place as we – well, I take that back. Yeah, I probably do take that back. Give me one second. Just uh, I want to check on my other system here. I just want to see what that uh, A to B equals C, the B to C retracement level would be. Just see if it's anywhere near a point three eight two. It looks like it might be. And if it is, then I'll come back and I'll draw that in. And it's, uh, yeah, 39%. So here's the A to B. So there is, today is another confirmed uh, by the D point pattern. So here's your A to B. Well, I'm going to try to put that in here. A to B. Here's your A to your B point. I'm just simply going to move this over to the uh, C point out there. We can see we had the first by the D point pattern when this bullish hammer and TD9 count bottom formed on January 19th. But price closed below the bottom of the hammer candle back here on February 5th. Today is a gap to the upside. That is a bullish reversal candle. So you have another by the D point pattern with price consolidating with inside that profile. So your first resistance level, other than where it is right now, is going to be at 143.83. That's the top of that daily profile. If price can close above that, we're looking at 161.04 out there. That's what I see, Vic, when I take a Coinbase. I hope that provided with the information you were looking for. G-Man inside the Tiger's Den would like to take a look at the amazing one, and that is Amazon, AMZN, right now consolidating with inside its daily profile. Its daily profile has support at 165.42, resistance at 172.50. I do not see any kind of uh, a bearish pattern. Uh, here, so you just have a consolidation on the daily time frame. The weekly time frame has negated uh, TD9 count top. Wide range bar last week. This looks like it wants to continue to move higher as well. And so too does the monthly chart. Now, on a monthly time frame, price is trading into its all time swing point high. That takes us back to July of 2021. The volume on that trading session was 83, 83 million shares. We are into it right now with 354 million shares. 354, and we're going into a swing point that had 86, 83 million shares. G-Man, what more do we need to know? It closed inside that swing point. There's no topping pattern there, no topping pattern to daily, just a consolidation, no topping pattern the weekly. Stevie's vote is we go test that high inside of Amazon. So I hope that provided you with the information you were looking for as well. And as always, thanks so much for the request. Pearl and G-Man, they teamed up. They want to take a look at high ho silver. So let's go take a look at silver out there. Now, I'm being told by Pearl inside the Tiger's Den that silver typically moves during a new moon. Pearl, I was aware of the price movement inside of gold, an initiation move. We don't know whether it initiates to the upside or the downside when it comes to full moons. But I did not know that there was any kind of new moon phenomena. I wish that I could test the new moon phenomena. I cannot. I can only test the, 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 the full moon. I can't test the new moon. What I mean by that, 
Well, here, first let's take a look at this, and I'll go back to it. So this is the seasonal charts provided by our good folks at uh, Seasonix out there. This red vertical line tells us where we're at. And right now, with regard to silver, which hasn't been responding the way that this tells us, is we are in the favorable seasonal cycle that typically comes to an end in about a week, February 22nd. So really two weeks, right? Week from, to, week from yesterday is Valentine's Day. So two weeks from basically yesterday is when the favorable seasonal cycle of silver comes to an end. Hmm, something to think about. Now, if we take a look at, come down to the lower right-hand panel chart out here. Whoops. Oh, boy. Not, we're not going to do that again, are we? Hmm. All right, I'm going to change screens here. This one hopefully doesn't go blank on me. When they go blank, that could be a problem. No, it could be. It is a problem. There's no could be. There's no if, ands, or buts. It is a problem when the screen goes blank. Now, back to this chart out here. Look at this March, April, May, June. Very unfavorable seasonal time period out there. Now, I was mentioning, and I can, unfortunately, I can't look at the, um, I can't look at the uh, uh, new moons. I can look at full moons. So, as an example, um, here if we come down to miscellaneous, so uh, the, the cool, it's cool that they have have some of this information out here. If I could just hold this, see, see they got a solar eclipse, lunar eclipse, and full moon. Now, what this does, this tells us how silver's been trading during the last uh, 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 during a ten day period over the last ten years when we get to a full moon. But I'm going to just switch. I would switch this to, to, to gold. Let me just go to a longer term. So I got 56 years out there. And typically, on a full moon, just so you can put this into your feather cap out there, you typically get a rally that lasts three days, a decline for a couple more days and then they resume higher out there so let's get back to the actual silver charts out here let's go ahead and change screens and we know that silver has been trading between a rising price channel and a descending price channel that's not going to be shown on the white but well you know what since i'm still on the black background charts let me show that we're going to a break right here and then we'll come back here you go these two charts gold and silver we'll be right back the gold report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? 
Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we got the charts here for silver up on our screen. We've got the uh, continuous contract in the upper left. That's a monthly time frame. What this shows us is that price is consolidating with inside its monthly profile. Its next level of support to the downside is 21.94. If you were to see a monthly close below 21.94, that would bring 1987 into play. We take a look at the weekly time frame chart. It created a sell the D point pattern. We have price consolidating with inside its profile. We are trading just slightly below last week's low out there. There. That's really a bearish sign out there. And that suggests that we could see silver make its way back to 2163. If we look at the daily time frame chart, price has just been consolidating with inside its profile. So the trading range for silver over the last couple of weeks has been really between its bullish structured profile range between 2237 as support and 2321 as resistance. If I look at the intraday charts out here, we can see a nice Rosemont indicator bottom on the 60 minute time frame. And what price did was it rallied right up towards its breakdown level didn't get up there but very close to it 2268 is a key level to watch on any kind of a rally out there if price is able to close above that we should see price then get to 2284 above 2284 we should see price make its way to 2335 out there now just real quickly back to those um yeah, we don't need to go back to the uh, to the other uh, silver charts out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at uh, silver out there. So G-Man and Pearl, hope that that helps you out. Danny from New York wanted to take a look at the IWM. We already covered the Russell 2000, at least the daily time frame. We provided you with a number that if price closes above at the uh, today's close is going to suggest a further rally. The IWM is going to take its P's and Q's from what the equity future contract does. But in the meantime, let's go take a look at the IWM. Let's see if we can figure out what it is doing. That wasn't it. Maybe this is it. The IWM. So here in the case of the Russell 2000, we've got a consolidation with inside its daily profile. This is a bullish structure daily profile, Dan from New York. And typically when you close above the center, which it's been above the center for the last two sessions out there, the bulls are able to make a run for resistance. In this case here, resistance resides between 195.95 and 196.61. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, we don't have a top. We just have price consolidated with inside its profile. And that profile ranges from 190.30, which this week price tested and rejected, all the way up to 205.49 out there. Price is above its green oscillator and change line. This says what the Russell to, or the IWM, the ETF, wants to do is go target 197.90. If we look at the monthly time frame chart for the IWM, what do we have here? What we have is a profile change in trend. And uh, price is trading above the top of its profile. It's above the green asset and change line. The monthly wants a further rally. The weekly, it's a consolidation, but it wants to move higher. At least that's its signal. And so, too, on the daily time frame. The question on the daily time frame, Danny, and we, I can't answer that. I don't know that you can answer that, but the market will answer that, is can it close above 196.61? If it does that, it'll then join what the weekly and monthly charts are saying, which is that it should lead to higher price out there. Now, if we take a quick peek, at an intraday chart for the IWM, for example, look at a 30-minute time frame. What do we have out here? Not much. We're trading above profiles. We're trading above the green oscillator and change line. No reason for it to not try to make its way to 198.94 as long as price remains above those two things, the top of a profile and that green oscillator and change line, which is currently printed at 194.16. So, Danny, hope that provided you with the information you were looking for there, and thank you so much for your request. LB writes in, and he wants to take a look at a um, lithium entity. L-I-F-F-F -F -F is the uh, name, and he's looking for an entry point. Well, I'd have to say at this stage here that two days ago what price did was it negated its TD9 count bottom. Well, first of all, if you look at the data on the screen, LB, we just don't have a ton of data to do what we'd call as a great technical analysis. It just is. 
I'm not trying to bow out. I'm just trying to let you know that we just don't have a ton of data. The data that we do, and I can't really say how reliable it is at this stage here because it's so, yeah, I'm not even going to go there. It's, I, And the there was, it shows a roads meant to indicator signal, but I don't think so. That's why I'm saying I'm not going there. Originally, I was going to say, you get a bullish reversal candle, fire away. And I would say, no, that's not the case. I think what you're going to have to, I, I at this stage here, we have not seen price close above a prior bar's high, close above a prior bar's high since uh, January 19th. So if you're looking for the first potential signal that Stevie could try to come up with for you, LB, on a chart that has minimal data, I'd have to say that might be it. Of course, you'd love to see a new daily profile so you know where the buyers and sellers are lined up. Right now, they're all sellers, and they're up at 452, and I'm not even sure that price could even get up there because it's got resistance at 370. The monthly chart actually shows that two months ago was a bullish hammer candle. And if you close below that low, it's so early in the session, we know if you close below that, that's says lower price we're trading at 331 it can't go that much lower it can only go lower by three dollars and 31 cents out there but a close below 470 is that right uh no 338 would say it's headed lower out there so i wish i could provide you with better information i would say if you see a close above a prior bars close and switch down to some intraday charts out there and start managing the trade that way that's the best information that i can provide to you lb i hope that helps you out joey d or joe d inside the tiger's den um wants to take a look at uh, roblox out there um rblx is a ticker symbol well uh so what was it that you wanted to know, Joe? It's trading into a swing point. This is a swing point from the trading day of December 28th. So the volume there is going to be somewhat suspect, right? Holiday, uh, 5.4 million shares. So far today, you're up into a 7.8 million shares. I'm going with, I, this is a, could be, I could be walking out on a limb here, but I'm going with the fact that price is trading into a swing point with volume, and it should go at least tag that high. And that high is 47.20. Now, what would be best for it to do that is at least close a day above 46.31. We're not there just yet. We've been up there, but I don't see any reason for this to not go after that when we take a look at the daily time frame. However... The weekly says, well, you could come up with a reason, Stevie. The reason why it might not be able to get after that is because prices traded right up in that weekly profile resistance level. And those sellers, they're lined up right at the 4611 area out there. We can see that that is stifled so far yesterday's rally and today's rally. And if we look at the monthly time frame chart, we're trading up at that resistance area of its profile, bearish in structure, and that's up at the 4537 area. So Roblox, the daily time frame, is telling us it wants to at least go tag tag that high tag that high out there but the weekly and the monthly are the uh fly in your financial ointment joe d so i don't know what more i can uh, share with you out here for roblox um I'll just have to leave it like that. Prices trading up into some potential resistance levels out there. But if you can clear them, then you might have some A to B equals CD patterns to the upside out there, both daily, weekly, and monthly. But that's not the signal that we have just yet. Duncan Steve wants to take a look at Juniper Networks. JNPR is the ticker symbol. This thing formed a beautiful TD9 count top. That was on January the 12th. And it turns out that it formed a TD9 count bottom just a few short days ago. It was actually confirmed two days ago on February the 6th. So let's look at Roblox when we come back from this break. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, 
dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Hey, we're taking a look at the Juniper Networks. JNPR is the uh, ticker symbol. We are identifying that when it did form a uh, top, uh, formed it with a nice uh, TD9 count top that led to a TD9 count bottom that confirmed just a couple of days ago. So now this is pretty helpful to you, Duncan. If price closed below the TD9 count bottom, we're just trading with inside this profile right now that has supported 3628 and resistance at 3804. But if we get a close below 36.82, we're headed to 36.28. That's the bottom of that profile. If we get below that, we're looking at 36.19. That looks like the uh, bottom of its weekly. Let me check this out here. Uh, 36.19. Yeah, that would be the bottom of its weekly profile. Where Juniper would get into real trouble is a close below 36.19. That would then say we're likely going to go ahead and close that gap. Now, I don't believe that's where we're at just yet. Why do I say that? Very similar to the um, one of the last instruments that we were taking, like at Amazon. If we take a look at Juniper, the uh, volume on its swing point high takes us back to March of 2022, 105 million shares traded hands that month. We're only a, uh, in last month, okay, full month, 183 million shares out there. So we know we're pushing into that swing point. We're still trading that swing point. That top was not tested, but it should be tested. The high of that swing, that's from March of 2022, is 3814. The high from last month was 3804. So it looks to me like that's what price wants to do. But right now, because of that wide ranging week we had four or five weeks ago out there, price just kind of consolidating sideways out there. So what you should be doing is watching support levels. Again, 3628, 3619, 
3603, you get below 3603, we're looking at the 33s, 3335, somewhere right around there. So, Duncan, I hope that that helped you out with regard to Juniper. I believe it was Monday or Tuesday we got a call from John inside the Tiger's Den who wanted us to periodically take a look at the soybeans. The November contract is what John is trading. What I've done is I've created the charts to take a look at that as well as the active contract, as well as the contracts that make up SOYB the ETF. What you're seeing right now is the March contract, which by the way, the March contract here has a confirmed TD9 count bottom. It's likely going to go ahead and confirm a Rogemintum indicator bottom today. The key here with regard to March is can price get back inside his profile? And that's the resistance level, 1206. If price can get above that, that would be positive. On a weekly time frame, you've got a confirmed TD9 count bottom. It's completed. Price should rally up to 1250 out there. That's what's going on with March, but that's not what John was interested in, he wanted to take a look at uh, November. So let's go take a look at November soybeans of 2024. We're going to switch over to a different set of charts. And here, what you're going to have are the three time frames that make up the holdings with inside SOYB. It's about a third, a third, and a third. Don't quote me on that. Just go look it up yourself. But here, we've already covered the uh, March time frame. How about the May time frame? We don't have a TD9 count bottom here, but a bullish reversal candle today would form a Rosemont to indicator bottom. The same as with July of 2024 and as well November of 2024 out there. The key here is just like we looked at in March is can price get back inside this profile? So in the case of May, 1217 and change. Call 1218 is resistance. 1227 for the July contract and 1189 for the November contract. Only getting above those levels will that tell us that we should likely continue to move higher out there. What does that mean for the SOYB? It means if you're going to trade that SOYB, boy, it almost sounds nasty when I say OYB, but uh, you, you, you kind of get it. In the case of SOYB, uh, price should rally up towards a 2593 level. It is above its red oscillator change line, as are the other three uh, futures contracts out here. So it does look like we're going to get a bottom today. Looks like it. Don't know for sure, but looks like we get a bottom today in the contracts that make up SOYB. I can understand somebody wanting to take that uh, trade out there. And, of course, if we get closes, if we do get those bullish candles today and we see a close below yesterday's low, you'd want to be out of dodge out there. So uh, that's what's going on. We take a look at uh, the um, – uh, the soybean contract out there. Now, I don't have any other requests, so let's do something else. Let's uh, first close this out here. And um, let's take a look. Let me switch screens. Let's go over to my black background screen. What I'd like to do, because we're going to follow soybeans, so we're going to follow that soybean trade for a while out there. So that'd be one thing that I'd like to look at, hopefully every day, maybe every other day at the worst case. What I'd like to do is find maybe one or two other instruments that each day, what we're doing is we're tracking those instruments out there. I don't want it to be an ETF, the SPIs, the S&P, something like that. I want it to be a stock. So what I was tinkering around with earlier before I came on the show is there's a cool thing inside of Seasonix. It's a screener. This screener, now what I have this set to, so that you can each see this tool out here, the upper left-hand side allows us to check out a market. Right now, this is defaulted to the Dow Jones Industrial. So we've got all of the stocks with inside of the Dow, or I believe we have all of the stocks with inside the Dow. Today is February 8th. That becomes our start date. And let's say we want to explore what's transpired over a 20-year period and what's taken place on average during the 31 to 60-day time period. What have what instruments, how they traded to the upside or to the downside? Now, I've got in here our long positions. And the long positions, the one that show up here for the Dow, Apple, typically over that 20-year period is at a 50% return out there. Not too bad. Maximum profit's been 35%. Maximum loss, about 16%. Of course, that would be a little bit of a stinger. But you got Apple, United Health, Chevron, Caterpillar. That's inside the Dow. We can change this and take a look at other indices out here. The other indices you and I can look at are the NASDAQ 100. If we take a look at the NASDAQ, we're looking at booking holdings. This time of year, booking holdings has outperformed, quite frankly, uh, by far all of the other instruments that are within inside this scan. Up next will be Dollar Tree, followed by Apple, CSX, Monster Beverage. Maybe it's Monster Beverage that will fall. I want to take a look at – you're not seeing the chart? I thought I had switched over there. Hmm. Sorry there, Mr. Bill. I love when I go through that whole dissertation. 
And then I pull. Oh, it's not showing up. That's really wild. What the heck? Huh. Okay, let's try this. Oh, my. There we go. You should see it now, Mr. Bill. Uh, let me just so so again. Here is the this is this is the tool uh, that uh, uh, the uh, that the uh, folks at the uh, at Seasonix they provide the uh, seasonal data that you and I get a chance to look at. This screener right now it's set to the Nasdaq 100 upper left. Today's the start date. We choose the period. We don't have to be 20 years. It defaults to 20 years. What time period? What takes place within the next 31 to 60 days out there? And then simply, what are the instruments? How do they show up? This is for the long. If I were to go ahead, we had a bias to the short side. Then we'd be taking a look at these instruments. So to the short side, we'd be looking at eBay, Align, NVIDIA, Autodesk. Now, how I would do this is I would take a look at these instruments. I'd take a look at we, this is what we would do. We would go ahead and take a look at um, anyone that has a topping or a bottom pattern out there. So what I'll try to do, I say try, I've got a very full day, full afternoon out here, um, is what I will try to do over, I'll tell you what, because tomorrow is Friday. By Monday, I will select, and I'll show you how I've come up with it, we'll select uh, uh, one or two, let's say one instrument to the upside, one instrument to the downside out there, and we'll just simply track them utilizing this tool. But you can see how this uh, this works. That's again. That's the uh, S. That's a Nasdaq to the downside. This is the uh, Nasdaq to the upside. Might be worth at least investigating. Booking Holdings. B K N G. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors.
Welcome back, folks. We've been through all the requests so far, so that's a beautiful thing. Let's uh, finish the uh, show by taking a look at the NQ out there. If we've got more time, we'll pop up something else as well. We look at the NQ and we start with the daily time frame. That would be in your upper left-hand side. What you can see here is yesterday negated the uh, uh, Rhodes Mint Indicator top. That had formed back here with this bearish shooting star candle. That was back on the trading session of January the 24th. Price is trading above profile. It's trading above its green oscillator and change line. It's in a full out bullish breakout mode out there. So on a daily time frame, when we're in a breakout mode, we look to see if we can find any topping patterns on the intraday charts. Turns out, five hour chart does not have any kind of topping pattern. Price right now in this bar closed at 2 p.m. is taking on resistance. A resistance up at 17,875.50. If you close above that at 2 p.m., it says we had higher. The 240 minute chart is really doing the same thing testing out profile resistance. The 120 minute chart doing a similar thing, taking a look at profile resistance. So we could see a stalling of the rally here. Just take a look at that top row of a five hour, a four hour and a two hour time frame chart out there. Now, in the case of the two hour time frame chart, a bearish reversal candle would confirm a top. The same can be said about the 60 minute time frame chart. We do not have that as we speak. Instead, what we have is price above a green outside and change line above the top of its profile. The 60 minute minute time frame chart is in full bullish mode out there. I don't see anything negative on the 15 or the 10 minute time frame charts out here. So it's really going to be all about this resistance level that right now the NQ is trading into. And again, that's up at that 17,876 area out there. We're trading at 17,878. So this is the area to watch. Now, if we get retracements and pullbacks out there, where would I expect that we would find support? I would watch 17801 as my first area on a move lower. And if 17801 fails, 17716 would become the price target. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. Thanks for joining me on Terrific Thursday. I hope you'll be back tomorrow on Fantastic Friday. Be safe out there. Have a great day. We'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care now.